might think that getting into the IT field is impossible without a computer science degree, but Tech Coach Ralph is here to prove you wrong. Get ready for some jaw-dropping revelations on how to break into this lucrative industry. Listen up, tech enthusiasts. Are you ready to break through into the IT field, but feel like you need a computer science degree to make it happen? Think again. Tech Coach Ralph has some exclusive, mind-blowing secrets to share with you. Get ready to be blown away by his jaw-dropping revelations on how to break into the tech industry without a computer science degree. So get your notepad ready, because Tech Coach Ralph is going to change your life forever. Buckle up, because you're about to embark on a journey to success in the IT field. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today is Wednesday, March 13th, 2024. We are in morning. Oh my goodness, I'm so out of it. We are doing coffee and kata. If you do not know who I am, I am your host of the show and of the channel, Tech Coach Ralph, where we are engineered to win. Yes, we are. And in the morning show, we are going to jump into our news topics i have my i got my coffee today i didn't miss like i did on monday you know getting adjusted to this time change it is so weird you wake up at all times of the night and you're just trying to be on time but we're here we are getting after it so we are going to jump into our news um we have the compliance section of our grc investigation our grc review coming out today at noon so you definitely want to tune in to come to that especially especially if you're interested in cybersecurity, but it goes way further than cybersecurity um, because we have, we, have, um, we, have to have, we have to be security minded in all that we do. So definitely tune in to the compliance part of our GRC um, software expiration. Uh, we already did the governance, we did the risk management, and now we're going to be doing compliance. And then most likely next week, we'll be going into the GRC framework before we end up moving on, all right? So let's go ahead and let's get started with our news. situated real quick and do me a big favor like the video share the video subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell so you can know every single time that we go live all right let's get the show on the road we're already a little behind schedule but let's not waste much time let's see all right let's let's do it let's get after it let's put our timer up And let's put five minutes on the clock. All right. So, oh my goodness. Look, look who is here. We have Bridget in the chat early this morning. But it says, daughter talked to me into early gym. So coffee and kata and cardio. Shout out to Bridget. Look at that. Uh, it's, it is six. 30 where she's at right now so getting after it that's what i'm talking about all right so let's get to it so if if bridget has the energy right now then i have the energy right now because it's 7 30 over here on the east coast so let's do it all right so our first story for this morning we have boeing loses united order to airbus oh poor i mean i'll say poor boeing but having your having your doors fly out is probably not the best the best marketing strategy you know um unless you're unless it's for a james bond movie so says United Airlines has asked Boeing to stop building a massive order for 737s Max Jet um, Max 10 jets and is swapping some of the 277 planes for Airbus SE A321 craft instead. The move handing part of, of an order to the planes, the plane maker's biggest rival, is only the latest blow for Boeing which is under investigation by multiple US agencies following the blowout of a door panel from a 737 MAX 9 Alaska Airlines jet mid-air earlier this year. Other airlines, including Southwest and United, have blamed delays in Boeing deliveries for cuts to flight schedules, as well as sales and hiring forecasts. Despite engineers' concerns, Alaska Airlines confirmed that before the door plug incident, 
it wanted to keep the jet in service until it completed three flights, after which it would have landed at a facility in Portland, Oregon for maintenance. Ooh, well, competition is fierce. And, you know, so if Boeing can't deliver, Airbus will step in just to do what they got to do. And we got my guy, Mitch, in the chat. He says, good morning, just stopping by. Real quick, shout out to you, Mitch. Thank you for stopping by so early in the morning. And uh, I hope you have a great day at work, killing it and running up bags, what I'm talking about. All right, so that's Boeing, and that is their their growing, growing issues. Um, only so much you can do, all right? All right, let's jump into our next one, because I really want to get to the, I really want to get to Flutter, so college admissions get extra messy so let's talk about that right this year's college admission process has been nothing short of tumultuous oh i got that word right the wall street journal writes contributing contributing to the chaos last summer's supreme court affirmative action ruling confusion about test optional policies and last but arguably most important a reworked free application for federal student aid mirrored in delays or mired in delays yeah, the FAFSA minor delays. Um, the most significant change changes to FAFSA in decades, according to an education department spokesperson, for, has forced many colleges to push commitment deadlines from May 1st to mid-May or later. One parent called it a perfect storm of life-changing events, big money, and no control. The limbo doesn't even take into account housing, Putting down a deposit at multiple schools while waiting to hear is financially impossible for both, said a parent. Options are getting smaller as time passes. A study from Burning Glass Institute and Strata Education Foundation shows that 60% of students with marketing degrees are still working high school level jobs five years after graduation. Okay, that's what I'm talking about right there. Well, one thing that I get out of this article is you probably don't want to go to college for a marketing degree if you're going to be working, if you're going to be. So if you, let's say you graduate at 22, uh, that means that at 27, you would still be working high school level job, which at this point, I don't even know what a high school level job is because everybody wants to be making $30 an hour for whatever they're, they're doing. Um, but yeah, so it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. You should probably be, and, and you know what, and here's the thing I always say about college, right? You, not every, like not everything is, deserves to be a college degree and you have to be super, super focused because that's how you run up your student loan debt when you're just going to college for whatever makes you feel good instead of what's actually beneficial to you. So always keep that in mind. All right. Okay. And let's get to our last one. All right. Of course we have to get to this one, right? Dating apps are losing their spark. Aww. Aww. And, oh, before we go on, Bridget says, I don't recommend a marketing degree. Even with a master's, it's underpaid. See, Bridget, Bridget will tell you. Thank you so much, Bridget. You see, um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of degrees that I don't recommend, but hey, who am I? I'm, a, I'm only one person on YouTube. But, you have to make your like you have to make your choices wisely because you know um i and i don't, i don't even know if it's underpaid it just might be the value that people feel that marketing should be is not the actual value that it brings you know i mean marketing is is, is important i think you have a better chance like being your own marketing agency versus you know and and it's like do you need to go to college for marketing that that's the question right there that's what i always wonder all right, all right, let's get let's get let's get back to this one, right? Because you know we all care about dating apps. So it says it's been over a decade since singles got hooked on swiping, and investor interest in dating apps is fizzling out. That's because the growth that attracted Wall Street to the to the to the likes of Match Group and Bumble has stalled in the face of generational change. The New York Times reports, as millennials have settled down, apps need more. Gen Zers to become paying users, but Gen Z is a smaller de demographic with less disposable income. They're broke, and they're in no rush to find partners. 
18 year old Mandy Wong tells the times that someone subscribing to a dating app would give her the ick. The ick, folks. The ick. Bumble CEO recently said the company is reconsidering the app's trademark policy, which requires women to make the first move. So, you know, now it's just going to become any other dating platform when uh, guys are just going to swipe right or left, whichever direction you're supposed to go for, on every every person that they see. And then the women are going to like, ugh, and get off. So similarly, Tinder is re reimagining the swipe feature altogether. So instead of swipe left or right, now it's going to be swipe up or down. Shout out to the dating apps, all right? So those are our stories. Let's see if there's anything that stands out up here real quick. We have Oscars rating CEO Reba. Well, congratulations to you, Oscars. Um, TikTok has TikTok to take a run at Instagram, so we shall see. Nike, FC Barcelona breaking up. Oh, that sucks. Aww. We read about Boeing. Open AI challenges Musk in court. Oh, we should read this one, definitely. Uh, college admissions, get it. we just read that. Inflation is um, still hotter than hope. Uh, hidden hidden cost of SVP. I forgot the, um forgot the but yeah so Walmart tries leveraging compassion not sure how they would do that take a quick look all right so let's take a quick look at OpenAI challenges Musk in court OpenAI has taken its counterclaim has taken its counterclaim against Elon Musk to court challenging the Tesla CEO's assertion that the two the two sides had agreed to a nonprofit status for the artificial intelligence startup it said in a filing with a California Superior Court that there was no foundational agreement with Musk and that the startup had never uh, acceded to making details of its um, GPT-4 large language model available to the public. Musk has his own AI startup, which he says will release a chatbot called Groke under a open source license this week. So that's going to be interesting, which also makes me wonder if there's any... Um... I don't know what I would call it, but... Or... Not intellectual property, but, you know, like conflict. I don't know. I, it's like conflict of interest or something like that. But, um, yeah. All right. And then lastly, let's take a quick look. Walmart teaching managers kindness. Shout out to you, Walmart, while you are getting robbed daily by customers. It says, the nation's largest private employer is focused on compassion, the New York Times reports. Every week, Walmart sends dozens of store managers to its manager academy, a pandemic era creation, hammering home the message that Walmart's success it's possible only if the store managers take care of their workers and the customers. Those leaders can oversee hundreds of other employees and millions of dollars in sales, and they face new challenges since the pandemic, such as higher worker turnover. Last year, about 1,800 leaders went through the program. Walmart expects another 2,200 to do so in 2024. Manager Academy is intended to make them feel connected to the corporate mission. Again, the time says. Starting in August, competitor Coal will add Babies R Us shops to about, 20, about 200 stores nationwide in a bid to boost foot traffic and lure younger shoppers. That one is kind of weird to me because Babies R Us, I remember, was for babies. So wouldn't it be like mothers that they're luring to the stores where i think mothers probably already go to kohl's but i don't know that's a i mean i only go to kohl's mainly for amazon returns so i don't know anyways that is our news stories for today all right let's go back and we are going to jump into our Coding. So let me go ahead and open Android Studio. And where did we leave off on Monday? Ah, babies have to spend those gift cards. I see. I didn't think about that. I didn't think about that. Yeah, uh, I have some gift cards. I still have a gift card over for my kid over here. So um, I have to see how he's going to spend it. All right. So I will show my backlog because I had a very, very amazing recommendation from my good friend Bridget in the chat yesterday. So we are going to here. 
open this. And that's one of the thing about having, not only having like beta testers, but having a, like being connected to a bunch of people in QA, they always have like these things that you don't necessarily think about, right? Because I've never really thought about accessibility and stuff like that, but can I get it over here? There we go. And as soon as I, as soon as I got off the call, I went into the backlog, created the story. Let me pull up real quick, put it up. So, all right, and let me get an emulator open. Do I need to? Right, so let me get the iOS simulator open. I, I don't know. For me, opening the iOS simulator normally works a little. Oh my goodness. We have that thing again. All right. Well, I guess we're going with uh, Android. All right. Let's put what time is it right now? It is 7.42. Let's go ahead. Let's just put 15 minutes on the clock for today. Um, while I'm getting adjusted to this time schedule, I, I'm just trying to... Do it like that. All right, so 15 minutes on the clock. Let's spend a little bit of time uh, looking through our Flutter development. And um, yesterday in the chat, I had uh, my new friend, Pluto, and he was he, he just finished his degree at um, Western Governors University, and he was telling me about that, which is something that I do want to look into. And um, So we'll probably at some point, maybe tomorrow, um, pull up Western, um, Western Governors University site to see some more details about it because it was pretty interesting how he was explaining it to me um and he's also he's also working in a um he's also working on like a security analyst and interested in mobile mobile um mobile app development so it's many things many cool things so let's go ahead let me see if i can pull up the simulator in the process let's go look at the backlog real quick so the suggestion that I had from um, from Bridget was to use like make, so it wasn't necessarily to use outline text box, but it was to make the input fields a little bit more visible. Um, so that is I, I went ahead and I created a story for it. And, and here's the thing about doing this, right? It puts you like the way that I do it, it puts you in the framework of working in agile. So you get a suggestion and I went straight to the backlog. I, I created a story, use outline text box instead of the standard outline, um, instead of the standard text box, right? And, and, um, and then the story is like the standard outline makes it hard to, um, hard, it was late when I was writing this, hard um, for accessibility and to know when it is an input field. The, the outline um, text box border makes it cleaner and easier to identify uh, the text box and acceptance criteria. The calculations are still correct, and that the there's an outline there's an outline border around each input field. Right, so we can definitely play with that as well. And one of the the ideas to refactor is let's see, hmm, we can have one if we have one. Um, Okay, um, a method or a function for the input fields and then we just send different keys to it so that'll be interesting all right so that is our story that's what we're going to be that's part of like I don't, we'll probably we can probably do that as a quick hit today um and what did we so we are working on the testing and as well as getting the as well as getting the error dialogue to show up so let me see is the do I have an emulator running? Yes, I do. Do I? I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, simulator. See if I can start one up. If not, we will start up an Android one.
the iOS, the, the reason that the iOS simulator doesn't always start up is because some spacing thing, um, which I had to do it last time. I have to figure out have, if, if it doesn't come up, I have to do it again this time. Uh, let's see. Nope, it's not going to come up. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and get rid of Xcode and we will start up our Android Studio. And see, this is what I was referring to the other day, uh, yesterday, Bridget, like with these simulators and these emulators, it is a pain to, to, to manage them and they take time to start up. So let's go and let's go over here. And let's get our where's the device manager? Let's get this one started. So let's also do this while it's getting started. Let's go and see what we need to do. So all we really need to do is add this right here. We should just be able to add this. Um, I wonder what obscure text does. All right. So let's go to So let's go to our code and we should Let's try it out actually. And then um, if we just see it work, then we can write our, we can write the surrounding tests around it, but just to, just to see how it's going to look if, and if it's going to work, cause we can write a, we can write the test and it doesn't even work. So um, let's take a quick look while the Android emulator is starting up. Um, if we go to a text box, text form field, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty good. These documentations, um, you know, with any documentation, like I'll say it's one of the better documentations, but still sometimes like it's, it's still a bit um, confusing trying to understand it. All right. Um, we are looking at, uh, sorry, why is it? Okay. Hmm. So let's see if this is going to work, right? We have a text form field and there's a decoration, input decoration. Okay, we have that. And then, okay, so border goes under here. And this is the, all right. So if we go just this one line in here, say border. No, not input. It's going to be outline. Input border. My computer's running a little slow this morning. Okay. Um, and then we put a comma here. It is moving slow. And if we do the obscure text, set that to true. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, so let's take that out. So maybe that's on a different type of field. So let's see if our emulator is up yet. Okay. So
All right, so um, let's let's try running it and see what we get. Because then, if this works, then we just have to apply it to the other ones. Um, so the thing that I was thinking about as well, when I was talking about like setting up as a function or a method, if we take this text field, right, and we can just turn that into a function and then we say, okay, I want to call in the text field and I want to pass in the key. I want to pass in the label text. Um, And the passing the type, right? Um, would that so? Let's see. Where is? Let me see. So if we take this text form field right here, um, the issue that I foresee is that it has all these extra things that it's doing in here, which might not work out exactly. So. Something to consider, something to look into. But yeah, I see this all this extra code in here. It might not work out to our greatest advantage if we do that. Uh, okay, so we shall see. This is something that we can explore later on once we get to it refactoring. And it's going to. So while that's happening, let's jump over to the other screen because it's taking its time to start it up. So on our on our board, we are going to be moving this one to here. And before we and before we release our like the updated version before we actually publish to go into the app store, um, what else do we have to do? So um, we need to still do this error message when they try to enter a decimal. We need to, so this is a, this is a feature. We need to add a, and it'll X button to add a clear all button. Um, so this should actually be two separate, two separate um, stories, to be honest with you, because we should have one for the clear button, which is one thing. And then for the X on each field. So we can do it like this. So let's say, let's write our story. See, and you get a little bit of everything here, right? Um, the software development or mobile app development, you get the, the Kanban, um, implementation of agile, you get the, you get the, uh, like how to write stories. So let's say feature, mm. say as a, I should say as a user, which I don't like to use as a user. I like to say as like a, or let's say as a user of the mobile app, um, I want to easily clear out a field um, by clicking a button so that I don't have to backspace all the way through and then acceptance criteria because the criteria is each input field has a button has a button to clear out the input the entered information. Um, what else should happen? Each button only clears out its particular field. The calculations are accurately adjusted based on the cleared out input field and anything else for that one so even if time runs out we're going to wait till the app gets started it's just 
whenever whenever it's a cold start, it takes a little bit longer, but it's building right now, so it's, it should be starting soon. Um, all right, so I think that's a I think that's a good representation of what we're looking for. As we get to it, if there's more things that come up, then we will definitely add that to our criteria. But very simple, and and here's the thing, right? Because a lot of people say, okay, how are you able to test all of this stuff? Uh, let's say this story was part of a sprint, right? This these requirements are not too too many. Like it's not like you have to write a bunch of bunch of test cases, okay? Um, so what I'm going to say is I'm going to duplicate this, this, um, story, clone it, have a wonderful day as well, Bridget. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you had a great time working out with your daughter. Take care. Talk to you later. So we're going to clone this to say, add clear all button, add clear all button, clear all input fields. All right. And let's do that. So on this one now, we can go to... Add X slash uh, X button for each field to clear the input, the user input. All right, so there goes that story and let's go to our backlog and we'll clean up the other one and the app is starting up. So we're going to switch that in just a moment. Let's go to our backlog and <clears throat> oops. We go to this one and let's go ahead and Let's move that in here. And let's add that to our MVP epic. MVP stands for minimum viable product. And <clears throat> I'm gonna go back because I, I don't like the side view. I like I would rather have the pop-up view. So we're gonna go here. And we are gonna go to Um, why is there an app button for me? Jeez. That's annoying. Um, all right, so. So the feature is as a user of the mobile app, I want to easily clear out all fields by clicking a button so that I don't have, um, so that I don't have to backspace all the way through all the fields when I want to start over. And Um, and for the acceptance criteria, there is one button that is used to clear all the input fields out. And, um, all fields are reset to zero and act that the calculations are accurately adjusted based on the clear on the cleared input fields right so very similar story but we making it separately because 
um, it's 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 two like although they might be related, they're two different streams of work. So we want to accurately accurately represent that because we might want to say, okay, in this iteration, uh, which I don't think I'm going to do, but in this iteration, let's get the clear button right, um, like for clear each input field, and then our next release we might do the clear all button. Um, so so that's the that's the thought behind it, right? So let's do that, save that, and the application is up and running. Um, gonna switch over in just a second. This looks kind of blurry. Okay, so let's go back over here. Before we wrap it up, we have. Um, okay, I don't know. It's so we have. You see, we have this little uh outline now so if we add that let's say we click on this what happens it's just going slow all right so now if we say okay so it, it's just going slow right now but um it does it does adjust it right now we have a clear border so let's say we say um let's say we have now, if we do our one zero, All right, let's use this one. Okay. The uh, the slowness is killing me here. Okay, um, one zero zero zero. Zero, zero, zero. We should be getting our pop up. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we have our input field. We have our um, 999999999. And that works over here. Our calculations. Um, cool. It's good. I like it. See, shout out to Bridget for the amazing UI idea. So now if we just go into here, we can we can update our test um afterwards to make sure that the outline does show. But if we let's see if we can do this really, 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 really quick. I have a meeting in a little bit, but let's go to text. Order and this is outline. Outline input border. And we scroll down a little bit more. So we can get this out of the way, see it looking differently, and we will have a good progress on that story. So here we go also to border. Okay, I think there's one more field, two more fields maybe. Uh, padding. Hey, we definitely need to optimize this code as well. Um, I think I'm missing outline. This is for money made from activity. This is for class of activity. All right, there's that. There goes the last one. Total hours spent. So, uh, no, this one and this one, we're going to say border outline. And if we run this again,
And then what I'll do is I'll come in here. Maybe we'll do this um, next time we meet, but we'll come into our test and say that on the input fields, I forgot which test it is, but um, here we'll say that upon entering the upon entering like the input fields that they should have that outline border as part of the valid we should expect it to have that outline that outline border but let's take a quick look all right there we go so we have um our border here let me see have our border here just running slow and if we scroll down some more, looks good to me. Very cool. Very, very cool. All right. So, well, um, Anything else we need to do before we go? So yeah, we just need to write our test and then we'll take care of that. And then we can move that story over to, so let's go to our backlog real quick before we wrap it up. Uh, so um, we have successfully done this, but we do want to write our test for it. This should be resolved, but well, no, we need to check the other fields as well because um, we should probably limit those other fields. Um, if they're causing issues um so we so pretty much these three right here um after we after we so after we finish um so this one after we finish writing our test for it then that should be ready for local testing this one after we finish writing our test should be ready for local testing and then we just need to worry about these other ones um and there's kind of like a i don't know there's an amount of time that the apps can be in test mode so we do want to be pushing up a second iteration of it very very soon um but yeah i think i think i think um we can get a lot of this done uh this one it doesn't necessarily have to be done in this iteration but it would be nice um but and this one i really do want to get this done for the ads so we shall see all right all right all right, all right. let's get back to full screen and thank you so much for um tuning in today um i hope that you got some good i hope you got some good insight on the the Kanban board, the story writing process, uh, the the recommendations and how we can apply recommendations to our, like to building applications, you know, getting user feedback, um, all that type of stuff, right? It's all connected together and then seeing how we go. So what we did was we went from the user feedback to putting it on, on, our, on our board, right? Um, prioritizing it, starting to work on it, moved it into the right column to actually doing the implementation. And the next step is to write our test around it and um, and go from there, all right? So hopefully that was helpful and informative to you. Let me take the timer off and we're gonna wrap it up. So like I said earlier, we are going, we're doing our premiere for the compliance um, at noon today. So we definitely wanna tune in and tomorrow night we're going to be going live, continuing to work on the free mind recovery. I still have to, I still have to see like, to have to mess with it to make sure that it starts up because I don't want to waste the time tomorrow tomorrow night on trying to get it to start. So I will be looking into that, and you know, you get to you get to understand the different struggles that we go through in the IT industry, especially in QA. So uh, with that being said, I am about to get out of here. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really really appreciate you all. You guys are amazing, and um, yeah, and I will see you live tomorrow night on the software expirations. With that being said. Once again, thank you. Thanks again. And if you haven't done so yet, if you haven't done so yet, do me a huge, huge favor. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you can know every time that we go live. If you need help, um, you know, if you need one-on-one -on -one coaching, then go over to www.techcoachraff.dev and we can um, we can work together to get you to that next level. All right. But on that note, I am out. Have a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday midweek. See you guys tomorrow night. You might think that getting into the IT field is impossible without a computer science degree. 
but Tech Coach Ralph is here to prove you wrong. Get ready for some jaw-dropping revelations on how to break into this lucrative industry. Listen up, tech enthusiasts! Are you ready to break through into the IT field, but feel like you need a computer science degree to make it happen? Think again! Tech Coach Ralph has some exclusive, mind-blowing secrets to share with you. Get ready to be blown away by his jaw-dropping revelations on how to break into the tech industry without a computer science degree. So get your notepad ready, because Tech Coach Ralph is going to change your life forever. Buckle up, because you're about to embark on a journey to success in the IT field.